I'm here today to talk to the pair of you about the issues that I feel seriously need to be addressed. <clears throat> as much as you both love your children. You tread in deep water. At this point, I'm looking at one person who's in denial at where they're at, and another person who's being very realistic and knowing exactly where they're at. Do you not agree with what I'm saying, Martin? I do and I don't. Do you know what I mean? I'm all right, I am. Are you? Yeah, I am, yeah. Is that all that matters? No, it's not, but you know what I mean? Martin and Natalie Williams live in Birmingham with their four children. Bethany, seven, Tyler, six, Laurie, five, and four-year-old Tia. Both Martin and Natalie work full-time. Martin works shifts for a fast food chain, and Natalie works at her local school. Despite both of them being out all day, it's Natalie who does all the cleaning, cooking, and the majority of the childcare. I find um, juggling work life and children quite stressful. Take it outside! Yes! A good two, three hours per day I'll be with the kids on my own, because um, obviously Martin shifts do vary a lot. And when Martin gets home, he heads straight for his hobbies. Martin's got an obsession with cars, fans. If he's not in the house on the computer or the watching the telly, he'll be out there fixing his van. He doesn't realise that I've been at work too. So he thinks he can come in and just chill out. But chilling out isn't an option for Natalie. Give me the bag. That's There's my money in there. All of her time is spent settling disputes and fending off aggressive outbursts. You're very naughty. The kids have, have now started to get um, physical, mainly with me rather than Martin. Pinching, <laughs> slapping, <laughs> punching, no. pushing. Mornings are mayhem. The battle to get the children dressed is a daily ordeal. That was my face. And bedtimes are equally gruelling. <laughs> Four-year-old Tia and six-year-old Tyler are the main offenders. It's quite heart-wrenching, really. A child can hit you and swear at you. Get in the car now. I'll shut up, you big bitch. I lose my temper a lot and I'll just start screaming at them. And it makes me feel... Awful inside. You're going to break the door! So I suggest you stop! Um, Natalie, when she deals with the kids, she just threatens them constantly over and over, and she should just tell them once, that's it. Just get dressed. She just gets so frustrated, whereas they seem to just ignore her. I'm going in a minute, so I'm going to leave you here. Is that OK? Is that OK? Tyler, please. Martin thinks that the children are just being kids and, oh, they fight, they argue, they're allowed to do that kind of thing. It makes me laugh when they have a tantrum. It's just... I think it's so funny. No! I wind them up more, though. I'll go, get to bed like that, and Tear will scream even more. No! 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 Martin and Natalie's opposing views mean they constantly undermine each other. Mess me about, it's your last chance. Ta-ra. Give it me back now. I'm just giving it to him. No, I'm Martin. If he goes to bed, does it really matter? Yes, it does, because he went to throw it at me twice. You shouldn't disagree with me in front of the children. You should say, you've done that wrong afterwards when they're not there, because that undermines me in front of them. Which I have tried. The pressures of family life are putting a major strain on their relationship. Me and Martin have split up, I think, about three times in the last 12 months. Um, one of them, the longest time, was for eight weeks. Natalie's hoping Super Nanny can solve their problems, but Martin's less convinced. I think Super Nanny will be able to help, but I'm not as, you know what I mean, <laughs> into it as Nat. She's dead cert this is the route to go, and I'm just like, just going with it, like, so. With Mum and Dad at loggerheads, Super Nanny's help couldn't come a moment sooner. She's got 17 years of experience transforming wayward children into models of good behaviour. But can she get four feisty children and dad to toe the line? Hello. All right. Hi, pleased to meet you. I'm Jo. Martin. Hi, Martin. You? Very well, thank you. Hi, Tyler. Pleased to meet you. How old are you? Five. Five. And how old are you, Bethany? Seven. Seven. And how old are you, Laurie? Five. Five? Hi, Tia. And how old are you, then? Four. Four. 
Supernanny's approach is to observe the family for a day without intervening so she can work out where the problems lie. And she doesn't have to wait long. It's time for the weekly shopping trip, but Tia doesn't want to go. No! Tia, no! As usual, getting the children ready to leave the house takes all of Natalie's energy. Don't! You can go and get your socks from outside and then go upstairs and get some clean ones. Go. Laurie! Laurie. Martin's had his bottom stuck to a chair in front of the computer. I just find it absolutely ludicrous that he can see what's going on in front of his own eyes and completely ignore that. What are you looking at there, Martin, and the computer? Oh, go, go karts. Yeah. After battling for half an hour, Tia's finally dressed. Dirty. But now it's Tyler's turn to stage a protest. No, it isn't, because this is clean. Stop it. Ty Will you stop it? <laughs> Outside, more quarrelling to contend with. Can we get in the car, then? No, you can get in the back, Tia. Sit down! <laughs> now you've just hurt Bethany, sit down! What do you say? <laughs> Tyler, will you get in the back, please? Please, just let her get in the front and you can sit in the back on the way home. So, is this what happens every time you get in the car? Yeah, she's always screaming and punching out at the others when, when she can't sit in the front. With Natalie and the children off shopping, Super Nanny does a little more investigating. I've just walked through the house and I've noticed at least six or seven cubby holes full of nails and, and just debris everywhere. And I mean, look at the garden. There's just swimming pools, broken pieces of toys and everything's half broken and half fixed. Everything's half, which probably is a very true representation of this family right now. What's the time, Mr Wolf? Home from shopping, the struggle continues. I've said no, now stop it. Get off the table, Martin, get him off the table. Daddy. Huh? Hold on. There are definitely times when Natalie's with the four kids and actually Martin becomes the fifth. I need to see Martin being more responsible. A few hours later, bedtime beckons. Getting all four children off to sleep is a major battle. Tia, come on, please. And tonight is no exception. How many times a week do you go through this? I'd say about three or four. So, I mean, if it's not bath time, it is just generally bedtime. So, I mean, bedtime is a struggle every night. So, with all of them. There is no story time. There is no... There's no blanket of security that comes from mum and dad before they go off to bed. It's, it's a chore. It needs to get done so they can have their evening. And the children are very, very aware of this. True to form, as soon as she's gone to bed, Tia is refusing to stay there. How do you both differ with, with respects to how you deal with bedtime issues? You'd stay up there with Tia, wouldn't you? Probably, You'd lie yeah. with her, yeah. I'd just leave her. Yeah. I don't think that teaches her to go to sleep on her own. I, I think that she'd benefit from me going up and giving her a cuddle, to be honest. You won't be able to me. go away, then. The moment you come away from her, she'll be a million times worse. Not like, she's tiring out now, cos she's just whimpering now. But she's coming back down the stairs. Yeah, but she'll go in a minute. But all she wants is a cuddle. Well, go and give her one, then, and see what happens. Go that's on. all she well, does. Well, go on, then. You sort her out. It could be a much happier home than what it is right now. Martin and Natalie need to recognise that they need to parent together as a team if they're to make any drastic changes in this house. Super Nanny's in Birmingham to bring the wayward Williams children into line. I just feel like I'm losing control. I just don't know what to do. But it's not only the four children Super Nanny has to contend with. 
She's also got to work hard to get Dad on board. Martin, for goodness sake. Having witnessed the family's problems for herself, it's time for Martin and Natalie to hear some home truths. I'm here today to talk to the pair of you about the issues that I feel seriously need to be addressed. <clears throat> as much as you both love your children, you're treading deep water. At this point, I'm looking at one person who's in denial at where they're at and another person who's being very realistic and knowing exactly where they're at. Do you not agree with what I'm saying, Martin? I do and I don't. Do you know what I mean? I'm all right, I am. Are you? Yeah, I am, yeah. Is that all that matters? No, it's not, but... you know what I mean? What part of you feels that it's acceptable and OK for you to sit on that chair all day and turn a blind eye? We clash when we try and do stuff together with the kids, so... Talk about that, then. Cos if, if I go in and try and discipline them, she just... I've done it all wrong. Is that why you've given up? Well, what is the point? Do you know what I mean? If all you get is a, a grief for it, all I want is a quiet life. I don't need none of this in my ear. Martin, you're 27. 27. Not eight. Yeah, but you've been spoken to like that, ain't doing it, so... What's the relevance in what Martin's saying here? When I'm undermined by you. Yeah, I can, I can see what you're saying, and yeah, I suppose I do agree with you to a point. Your children need to see the solid rock, that united front. Martin needs to be able to feel equal as a parent in this house without you undermining him. Natalie needs to feel like you're there with her as a proud parent. But I don't see nobody feeling proud about being a parent right now. At the moment, your home represents where your headspace is. Clutter everywhere, tools, nails. Why? I wish I knew because I'm fed up of arguing about it. There is no discipline in the house. The children haven't known consequences. Anything goes in this household. You are not doing the best that you could do as parents. And that means you're failing your children. They're not that bad. I don't think they're that bad. You don't think they're that bad? No. You think that Tia punching <coughs> and kicking is acceptable. Every time she kicks off, she will get her own yeah. way because that's what she's been taught. You think it's OK for Tyler was... to be having meltdowns and shouting is acceptable. And I'm telling you how it is, because the truth <laughs> is a powerful thing. And you need to hear it. You need to change. We both need to change. I want to. I'll give it a go. <laughs> I'll try, yeah. OK, so today we start. Lots of work to do. Yeah. So let's get cracking. Cool. I do accept that there is a problem here, but not as major as she's going on about. Martin is very, very stubborn. So, I mean, if she can get him to toe the line, then she's one hell of a woman. And this woman's ready for action. It's time to kick-start the discipline and turn Martin into a dynamic dad. First on Super Nanny's agenda is a tidy up. You can't expect your children to tidy up their room or to have any sense of pride in their own belongings if actually they look up to their mum and dad and they haven't got any either. Like I'm looking at Waynetta, the pair of you. So, are you ready? Cheeky cow, I tell <laughs> you. Right are you ready? <laughs> I can't believe you've got a trolley in your garden. They tried to charge me three P for bags, right? I weren't paying three P for bags, so I robbed the trolley. You've stolen a trolley, Martin. No, you fell in the back of the <laughs> It's been a productive morning, and when the children get back from school, they're delighted with their new look home. See, it was worth it, wasn't it? Ah, look at you smiling now. It was worth it. Look at their smiles. Mummy and Daddy done that because they wanted to make us happy too. I like the playhouse. So with happy parents, happy kids and a clutter-free home, the real work can commence. Naughty chairs for discipline. Purple, mine. The pink no, one. Yellow, mine, yellow, mine. Listen, 
Do not be mistaken, children, that these are chairs to have fun in, because they're not. This is a place of reflection for them to understand that you've just drawn a boundary line yeah. and they need to understand that there's a consequence for that. And that's exactly what you guys are going to do as parents with these naughty chairs. But Super Nanny's not all about punishment. Praise and encouragement are key incentives for promoting good behaviour. Every time you do as you're told, or you listen to mummy and daddy, you play nicely and share, you'll be given a flower for your flower pot. One, two, two, three. And for only boy Tyler, there's a Rocket Man reward chart. And when you reach 10, you'll be given a reward. But the promise of rewards is soon forgotten. It's dinner time, and Tia is testing her luck. Tia, Tia. Sit down, Tia. Tia, sit down, mate. No, please. <laughs> OK, Martin, that's where you would give her a warning. So we're looking for that <coughs> low-toned, authoritative voice. Go on, then. Don't interrupt. Martin's quite capable of doing this. Yeah, sure. It... Come on, Auntie. Come on, and sit down. Hey. Tia, you're going on a naughty step. Last chance. No, no last chance. I want you to follow through with the naughty chair. OK, pick her up, take her to a pebble chair and explain why you've put it there. <coughs> Come right down to a level. If you don't sit down here, you're going to have to sit here, OK? Daddy put you on this naughty chair because why? Because you wouldn't sit down at the table, mate. You can stay there, right? Yeah. Tia must stay on her naughty chair for four minutes. A minute for every year of her age. But she's not taking it sitting down. Yeah. OK, Martin. Yeah, she's got up. Yeah, so don't talk to her. Just place her back onto the chair. Okay, come back. The reason why she's testing you now is because you went, all right, mate, on the chair, come on then. She thought you was having a laugh with her. Despite Super Nanny's encouragement, after only two attempts to get Tia to stay on her chair, Martin decides she's had enough discipline for today. Sit down then and eat it. Excuse me? Oh, well, she sat down, mate. Uh -oh. If you do that, you show her that actually you're full of hot air. If you mean what you say, then follow through. Because that's why there's no discipline in the first place. Because you didn't follow through. Back to the naughty chair, Martin. She knows how many times she needs to get up before you give in. <clears throat> and that's what she's doing with you. She's saying, how far are you going to How far are you going to come? Come on, Martin. Come on. That's no, 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 keep do going. It. How many times am I going to do this? You could do it for an hour, but I'll be yeah, here with you, mate. I ain't doing this for an hour. Why? <laughs> Just a pain in the arse, it ain't working, is it? Martin, you've not even tried yet, mate. That's it. With Martin told, he knuckles down. Get up. Get up. All right, well done, Martin. Right, nice one, Martin. <laughs> Another 20 minutes go by and Tia is still putting up a fight. <laughs> Sit down, he's not funny. OK, Dad. Dad, see, by talking to her, what that's clearly doing is giving her reason to feel that she can continue <coughs> doing what she's doing because it means she's going to get your attention in a negative way by you talking to her. I think he's coping quite well. Although, I feel he would have given up by now. I don't feel he wants to carry on with it um, by his facial expressions. After another half hour, Tia is still refusing to stay seated for the full four minutes. Following through. <laughs> I mean, I said if it don't work, I'm going to be mighty pissed off with her. <laughs> it will work. It will well, work. we'll see. It will work. Fucking taking ages, isn't it? Finally, after clocking up over a hundred escape attempts, Tia stays put and does her time. Now Martin must get an apology. OK. Tia, right. you have to put on the step. No, see that? Tia's putting the step. It's all play. You've got a sing-song voice. You were put on this naughty chair because you misbehaved. 
And that was naughty behaviour. Okay. A firm voice then, Martin. Yeah, I want you to tell Daddy that you're sorry. Give me a look. You're gonna sit down at your dinner now. Yeah? Um, I had to do that naughty chair with Tia for about an hour. Walked about three miles, kept putting her on the chair. So, it seemed to work in the end. If it didn't, I just wanted to smack her in the face, that joke. <laughs> but it seems to have worked, so she's lucky. Grab you for a minute, turn this off. Yeah. That took best part of an hour. Yeah. Best part of an hour. Hold on, I just want to talk about that, yeah. Best part of an hour, but you stuck with it, you followed through, yeah. and you showed. Good. Well, she hasn't eaten for an hour then, so... Oh, no, no, <laughs> she, yeah, but you know what? She hasn't eaten for she, an no, hour. No, 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 she hasn't eaten for an hour, but she made that choice. Yeah. She made that choice. Having converted Martin to the merits of the naughty chair, it's now Natalie's turn to put it into practice. Tyler, Mummy sitting you on the naughty chair because you wouldn't share with Laurie. No, look at me, please. And then you went to kick me in the face. Unlike Tia, Tyler stays put on his chair for the required six minutes. But when Natalie attempts an apology, he's less forthcoming. Mummy sat you on the naughty chair because you would not share with Laurie and you went to kick me. Now I want an apology. Hold on a moment, what's this? Tyler, you do not put your foot up at your mother's face. That's naughty behaviour. Naughty. Half an hour goes by and Tyler is still refusing to apologise. <laughs> As his defiance builds, <laughs> so does his anger. And when he starts misusing his naughty chair, Super Nanny takes action. Put the chair away. He can't obviously use the chair, can he? Because he keeps throwing it. Place him on the floor. You're doing really good. You're staying focused, you're staying strong. He's angry. You stay calm. Yeah. And you teach him. He has to learn to respect you. I'd like you to say sorry, Tyler. I will not! I've already told you! No, 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 no. Give me my chair and then I'll say sorry! Give me my chair and I'll say sorry! As Natalie struggles to keep control, Super Nanny encourages Martin to show a united front. OK, Martin, what I'd like you to do here is just to take Tyler and just be calmly taken back to the corner. Silvis is still very angry. <laughs> Despite their persistence, Tyler becomes increasingly abusive. I hate you, you big, fat, big, big bitch! Ignore the mouth. You big, fat bitch! Where did your son learn that language? Um, Martin, Calling you a big, fat bitch. Martin used to call me a bitch all the time. So, yeah. so the man in the house never used to have respect for you and neither does your son now? No. After an hour and a half of protest, Tyler's aggression turns to tears. With an apology secured, Super Nanny shares her concerns with Martin and Natalie. What I'm seeing from Tyler is behaviour that he's seen from the pair of you. The lack of respect that you've given to Natalie 
over the years and vice versa. Go on, yeah. What are you laughing at? It's just go on. Don't worry. This is what? Go on, carry on. And they tell me. It's just and the other way around. Go on. I was just about to say. That's right, then. And the other way around, OK, has now taught your son that he doesn't need to have respect because nobody else that he looks up to has respect either. But that's real. Yeah. Super Nanny Jo Frost is on a mission to help frustrated mum Natalie regain control of her four feisty children. Martin! And motivate complacent dad Martin. Tia, you've put on the step. No, I see that. Tia, you've put on the step. It's all play. You've got a sing-song voice. Now that she's put some discipline in place, Super Nanny wants to tackle one of Mum's biggest challenges. Stop it! Getting all four children up, dressed and out of the house. Right, OK. This is what we're going to do. The get up and go chart. You see at the top here? Wash face, teeth, get dressed, make bed, pack bag and put on your shoes and get off to school. I'm going to put this up on the mantelpiece in this room, and when you've washed your face, you're going to come back down here and you're going to find the right picture. And what's this? Washing the face. Good boy, washing the face. Motivating the children to get themselves ready should help make the rush before school less frantic. And let's get up and go. Super Nanny sees to it that it's not just the children who are taking an active role this morning. Oh, Martin, do I have to see you up this morning, mate? Oh, no. Tyler, what have you got to do now? Like this. Off you go, then. Up until today, Natalie has had the most difficulty with six-year-old Tyler. Anything you can do that will keep more structure and keep you organised is going to keep you on top and your head above water, because there is no room for that when you've got four kids. Have you made your bed? You haven't. Oh, I've got to go and see this one. Where's that? Upstairs with Mummy. Show Mummy you've made your bed. Say, look, Mummy, look what I did. Wow, that's beautiful, isn't it? Fantastic. You did that really, really quick. Good boy. In line with the new rules, good behaviour gets rewarded. Yay! Wow, wow. Is that good? Wow. For the first time in years, the morning routine passes off without tears or tantrums. And even Martin's impressed. Going. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah? Who surprised you the most? Tyler. <laughs> Tyler? Yeah, he never gets stressed, never. Not for any of us. He's done all right, isn't he? Yeah. You proved me wrong, woman. You proved me wrong. <laughs> the kids are back from school, and with Martin more receptive to Super Nanny's changes, she turns her attention to establishing some family bonding time. Butterfly. Making time for family activities teaches the children that they can get their parents' attention through good behaviour instead of bad. This family are having a wonderful afternoon painting together, spending that quality time together, and a lot of families don't do that. They're worried about the mess, they're worried about the paint going all over the kids and everything else. But this family have just got straight in it at the deep end as such. And and that's good to see. I've finished. I enjoyed it, really. I thought it was a good idea with Joe's for us to spend more time as a family, cos I don't feel we do it enough. You know, it's either one of us with the kids or the other one with the kids. It's never both of us. So I thought it was really fun. They are more relaxed. They are more just responsive when you tell them to do stuff. So it seems to be working, annoyingly. <laughs> Life in the Williams family is beginning to turn a corner. Martin and Natalie, what we are going to do now is the bedtime routine. Yeah. We're going to create the tranquility, keep everything calm. Come on, Bethany. Dad. As well as establishing a solid routine which helps the children to unwind, Super Nanny wants Martin and Natalie to tackle bedtimes as a team. OK, Martin. Mum's going to come and do bedtime now for the girls. And then you've got Tyler for bath. There were humans on board. One of them was very handsome. Aero heard the others call him Prince Eric. This is very lovely to see. Mum and the girls reading stories. They're very tired and ready for bed. But everything's a lot calmer, and the children get to have Mum and Dad at bedtime. We're getting a result here. Normally, it takes a good two hours before all four children settle down to sleep. Super Nanny explains the next stage of the routine. So what we're going to do now 
is the same bed technique. Yeah. All right, and the steps with that are three. First time the child comes out of bed, it's bedtime, darling. Yeah. Take them by the hand, tuck them back into bed. Okay. The second time, you state what it is, yeah. bedtime. And the third time when they come out, you don't give them any eye contact or communication. You just usher them back into the bed and put the covers back over them. Okay. All right? Okay. Armed with the new rules, it's Martin who's put to the test first. It's the third time. In line with Super Nanny's advice, Martin repeatedly takes Bethany back to bed. <laughs> but she's not about to give in easily. Ah, why are they getting... ah. right, you're going to do this again, and you're going to stay calm. Do you know how you're going to stay calm? Because she wants you to lose it. She wants that negative attention. Take her back upstairs. Let go! Get off! It's hurting my arms, mommy! As emotions run high, Super Nanny gets to the bottom of the problem. Take her upstairs, please. Let go! She came down here and looked at you because she wants you to do what you always do. What's that? That curve of the Martin is exactly. I think both Natalie and Martin are finding it extremely difficult. They've got into, for many years, a lot of bad habits. They've never had discipline in the house to a degree where they followed through and were consistent. So changing those behaviour patterns, recognising that they can't give up on the first hurdle, is going to really push them and test their own strength. And I think that's what they're finding now. In the end, it's Mum who gets Bethany up to bed, but she and Martin have backed each other up, marking the beginning of a new regime. Over the next few days, the good work continues. Good girl. T is going to get a flower because she was a superstar. Yay! And as the rewards add up, Martin embraces his role as a dutiful dad. By the big barn door. See? But for Natalie, enforcing discipline continues to be a struggle. OK, I gave you a warning, and now you are sat on the naughty chair. You will sit there for six minutes, and then I will ask for an apology. Sorry! Okay. Can I ask for an apology now when I say sorry? <laughs> sorry! Tia? Come on, Don't give up now, work through it, OK? No one said it was going to be easy. I oh, know. All right, when that going gets tough, remember why you're doing it. You can't give up. Mm. Find that strength from somewhere, girl, because I know you've got it. Come here. I'd like an apology, Tyler. And hugs. The next day, Super Nanny's teaching has come to an end. And with Martin at work, she gives Natalie some last minute advice. Keep up the praise. Children can't get enough of it. Keep it up constantly, OK? But at the same time, remember that they'll push those boundaries. So follow through with the naughty chair. Yeah. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And from there, we'll move on, OK? One step at a time, that's all you can do. Yeah. All right? See you soon. Say bye. See you bye. 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 Following morning, without Super Nanny, Mum and Dad get off to a good start. Tia, make your bed. Martin continues to share the load. That sucks. And instead of battling with the children like before, Natalie follows Super Nanny's advice and gives lots of praise and encouragement. Look at all those on there. That means we've done everything, doesn't it? How quick did we do that? Is that fantastic? Between them, life is running a lot more smoothly. But it's not long before things begin to unravel. It's bedtime, but despite keeping up the routine... Can you guess what night it was? Mm. It was Christmas Eve. Of, of course. course. <laughs> when it's time for lights out, Martin's patience is soon tested. You've been nasty! I'm not... I'll let you stop. Yeah! When Tyler refuses to stay in bed, far from remaining calm like Super Nanny taught him, he loses his temper. So I don't, I swear to God, you're going to get eaten. Go on. Ah! 
and I'll let you live here. As the week progresses, Natalie also struggles to stick to Super Nanny's rules. When Tyler hits Bethany, Mum bypasses the warning and goes straight for the trump card. Right, you will go and sit on the naughty chair. I'm sitting you there, Tyler, because you keep hitting everybody. Right? Just Bethany once! I'm full of coward! You bitch! <coughs> Mum, I can't do this today. I'm in one of their moods. Natalie's mixed messages have a negative effect on an already wound up Tyler. I don't feel like I am managing it as well as I thought I would with the techniques. I find it hard to keep calm and, and carry it through. I just feel like giving up and saying, well, just do what, what you want to do. Please take it outside. By the end of the week, Natalie has lost control and her relationship with Tyler is at an all-time low. Take it outside. I just haven't got the energy to fight with you today, Tyler. But Tyler doesn't appear to be listening. Rather than keeping her cool and staying in charge, Natalie locks Tyler's bike outside, which only fuels his temper. <laughs> and yet again, with no warning, he's sent straight to the naughty chair. I'm, I'm sitting you on the naughty chair. Just stop it! No! Sitting you there for six no! minutes because you was hitting no! and kicking me! For the past week, the Williams family have been struggling to maintain Super Nanny's techniques. I'm sitting no, on the naughty chair. The house is once again a battleground. And now Super Nanny's back to show them where they were going wrong. Right, Natalie and Martin, let's take a look at this footage. Because whilst I've been away, you guys have been busy. Okay. Over in the meadow where the stream runs blue lived old mother duck and a little dog. Martin reading. Good to see. I like that book. <laughs> Good to see. Upstairs. <laughs> so I don't. I swear to God, you're going to get it. Come on. You're in a big man. Don't forget it. Good night. Ultimately, he wants your time. But I've read with him that night. Yeah, you did I really good. I spent some time with him, so yeah, no. explain that way then. <laughs> no, you're getting defensive. I'm not saying. No, I'm not. I'm not yeah, saying it's you. You did. Yeah. I was very pleased to see that. Oh. Extremely pleased. And I'll let you live here. What's that? And I'll let you live here. <laughs> live here. And I was really kick him out some night. Sorry. <laughs> Just want to kick him out, man. I swear. But you can't go say things like that to him. What he does is it damages their self-esteem and their confidence, and it makes them start to wonder that if you say it enough, do they mean it? It's I'm sitting you there, Tyler, because you keep hitting everybody. Right? Just bet it once! I'm full of coward! Why were you laughing? I don't know. What do you think he got from that? I thought it was a joke. Mm. That was a bit of a mixed message there, to say the least, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just haven't got the energy to fight with you today, Tyler. Where you feel so down in the dumps, where you feel like you're not getting anywhere the kids, you start to get depressed. And when you get depressed, you shut down because it's one of the first things that mums do when they start mm. to get depressed. They shut down their communication with their children. Mm -hmm. If you'd have spoken more to him, he would have been able to have an understanding of what you were expecting from him. Yeah. And if then refused, you could have then have gone through with a warning. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to continue. Because there is a cycle here. There is a destructive pattern here in how they get your attention. <coughs> If he continues to have a relationship with you like this, very volatile, how do you think he'll grow up as a young man in his adulthood? He'll be the same. How do you think he'll view other women? I think that it's okay. Why is he not being corrected, Natalie? I don't 
don't know, because I feel like I am trying. The relationship I see with Tyler and you, Natalie, is not going to bring you closer together as mother and son. Mm. What needs to happen is a lot of trust and we need to change that relationship. With no time to waste, Super Nanny gets to work. Are you ready for some fun? Yeah. You're going to play a game with Mummy. Can you see? No, I can't. One. Super Nanny's exercise relies on them taking instruction from one another. Turn to your left. Well done. And put it in the push chair. Wow, yay! Well done, Tyler. What we're seeing here is a wonderful opportunity for Tyler to spend some good time well done. with Natalie. Well done. Just bonding together and learning to trust one another and to listen. To your left, Tyler, that's right. Well done. That's three yellow balls. Camera, this is good because you're communicating. Put it in the bucket. Can you feel it? Feel for the bucket. Well done. Under the slide. Wow, clever boy. We did that together, didn't we? Yeah, give me hope. Next, it's Tyler's turn to instruct Mum. Left, one step. Pick up the dolly. Yeah! <laughs> oh, no, well, Where are we? Oh, oh, wow! <laughs> Did we get to the end? Yeah. How good was that? This kind of stuff is going to always allow you both to communicate with one another, use skills as listening, taking direction, and also build your own relationship because you're working together. It's team yeah, yeah. building material. Yeah. And as you can see, we've just used what you've got in your garden. Yeah, that's it. Well done. High five. Yay. Well done, the pair of you really <laughs> well together. Concerned that the family only communicate through negative behaviour, Super Nanny spends the rest of the day concentrating on family bonding time. Laurie, Bethany. And Tia, you're going to have some special time with Mummy. We're going to do some girly stuff. And the boys are going to play darts. OK, it's really important that Tyler gets to have some time with his daddy and to develop that relationship. So it's on. Everyone give praise. Everyone is going to build his self-esteem. It's going to really make him feel confident. Go on, keep going, keep going. He just wants to be a mini you, but playing darts. <laughs> That's 60. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that was good, that was. This is going better in his hair, because I think he's got long hair. What's really beautiful is that they're really just opening up the communication between all of them as a family. I look nice. Sorry. Oh, wow, you look beautiful, don't you? You should throw it with them up like that. I've seen laughter. They're talking about different things. And it's just making time to join in as a family and open up that communication. It's now time for Super Nanny to leave. Give me a hug. Take care. Be good. Yeah, shall do. Take care of yourself, mate. I may not be here, but I hope my spirit's here yeah. when you're feeling like today's a challenge. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Make sure you ain't putting him on that chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah. Take care That's of yourself. Bye-bye. Well, it's certainly been a rocky road for this family, to say the least. I mean, trial and tribulation for both Natalie and Martin, but the key point here is for them to work together. If they just work together and recognise what they need to do to be able to turn around their family dynamic, they're going to hit jackpot. It just takes a lot of work, a lot of commitment, and let's hope they continue to do that. A month later and the Williams family are working hard to keep up the techniques. It is easier when we're getting up in the morning to, you know, get ready and go. They seem to be going to bed all right now. Reading more stories, well, most nights, so... You do it every night now, don't you? They're also continuing to work at their relationships. I can't remember the last time Tia actually lashed out. Hello! I think that's because me and Martin are a lot calmer. So Can you copy me? I'll copy you, then you show me how to do it. Tyler's not physical with me um, as much as he used to be anymore. Which one are you making? Oh, that is called classic darts. Oh, dark one. So we are very much closer in that respect. Whoa. I am better friends with Mummy because she's better and I'm better too. But the biggest change is Martin and Natalie, who are now parenting as a team. I'd say that, you know, from having Super Nanny here, we've gained the understanding of why we need to work together. Well done, all of you. Well done. 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 Well done.
Yeah. She has helped us work together and not against each other. That was the main problem, you know what I mean? So a united front. As well as backing each other up, they share the workload and childcare more evenly. Martin is more motivated in the house. You are showing some progress in the fact that Some, you yeah, are. you sound like a teacher. They've also taken Super Nanny's advice and are doing more things as a family. I can't see. I am glad she came. It has changed for the better. Look at that little baby one. Oh, it's a little nipper look. I think me and Martin really turned a corner. I can see, like, a future for us both now, and it's good to think that. There was room for improvement with the kids, yeah, definitely, but it was more between us. We needed sorting out, not the kids.